be here in another ten minutes or so. Good. Here are your drinks. Sherry? Yes, thank you. And cognac for you. Enjoy. Thank you. Tell me, Damien, did you know Mrs. Saxon when you lived in Washington? Oh, she would have been Geraldine Whitney at that time. No, I didn't know her myself, but I'm sure my father ran into her on several occasions. She was a very active lady in Washington social circles, so I understand. Yes, yes, she was. I should tell you. I know who your father was. I know what happened to him. I know. I didn't really think that I could keep that part of my life secret for very long. In fact, uh, I'm kind of relieved that the truth is finally out. Well, why did you feel it was necessary to be secret? I knew it would be helpful. In what way? Well, I thought it would make it easier for me. For me to do what I have to do. Well, what is it that you have to do? Oh, forgive the question. Reporter's instinct. I'm sorry. Well, as a matter of fact, that's something that I would prefer to see out of print. In fact, I would be happy never to see my father's name in print again. Except for a vindication. Well, now, I, I know that he was with the State Department for uh, many years, but he wasn't a public sort of person, was he? Well, he wasn't the kind of man who gave press interviews or sought publicity. <laughs> but his job at the State Department was very important. And it certainly meant a lot to him. I do remember the, uh, the story on his suicide. Yes. Well, there wasn't much to that, was there? A couple of lines in the press, official obituary, and after that, nothing. No, there are very few people who know the real reason my father killed himself. And, of course, far too many people who think they know the reason. What was the reason? My father was about to be investigated as a possible traitor to his country. He was suspected of having stolen certain vital defense strategy documents. Well, I'm sure you heard all about that. Oh, yes, yes, I had, but I mean, that, that was years ago. What, about four years ago? I'm sure everybody's forgotten about that by now. I haven't forgotten. I don't use my father's name for a reason, but that doesn't mean I've forgotten it. In fact, there's another name that I will never forget. And what's that? Jefferson Brown. The edge of night will continue in a moment. I don't believe this. I'm telling you, Jody came home in a state of panic. She says this, this trained bear of yours tried to maul her. Nothing like that happened, Doctor. You've got my word. Well, maybe, maybe it happened before you came downstairs. No, I was here when Gunther admitted her, and I didn't hear what he said, but uh, I know nothing physical happened. Yeah, you see, Doc, your uh, sister-in-law just misinterpreted things. Uh, uh, young girls are like that. But I was just joking around, just kidding. No harm in that, is there? There may be plenty of harm in it for you, Gunther. You can consider that a warning. I don't use my father's name for a reason. But that doesn't mean I've forgotten it. Just as I can't forget another name. What name is that? Jefferson Brown. Now, I'm sure you haven't heard of him. His name was never in the press. Except on one possible occasion. Well, it does sound familiar, but I... I can't quite... Uh, Mike, hi, darling. Hi, honey. Mm. This is a nice surprise. Well, it's good to see you, Mike. How are you, Danny? And, uh... I'm afraid I'm intruding on a private party. No, 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 not at all. No, no, I've been wanting to talk to you for some time, Damien. Well, I have been talking to Nancy. In fact, I've already told her more than I've told anybody else in this town. Yes, uh, Nancy does have that effect on people. I was just telling her about a man named Jefferson Brown. Have you ever heard of him? Mm, no, I don't think so. Well, he worked for my father. You might say he was his trusted assistant. Unfortunately, he was totally unworthy of trust. The edge of night will continue in a moment. No, I... I don't really know Jefferson Brown. I met him in my father's office a couple of times. On the surface, he seemed like an honest, straightforward fellow, but... No, there was something in his eyes, a hungry look. 
Oh, it's difficult to explain. How long did he work for your father? Well, I don't think it was even a year. He seemed like a bright enough guy. Uh, he got through college on scholarships. He had a military record. Actually, his history is very difficult to trace. You sound as though you tried. Yes, I did. Here's your vodka tonic, sir. Mm, thank you. You're welcome. What was uh, so important about this man, Brown? Did he have something to do with what happened to your father? I think he had everything to do with it. Oh, Damien was just telling me about his father's suicide, about the allegations against him. Uh, there's no secret about it. I'm sure you've heard the story. Mm, just part of it. Something about missing documents. Yeah, just several pieces of paper. That's all. They were enough to destroy my father's life and change my own life. Oh, don't misunderstand me. They were very important papers. They were contingency documents. I'm sure you know what that means. Yes, defense strategies that uh, could be put into use if they had to. But I'm sure there must be hundreds of documents like that. That's true. And these were no more or less important than any others, but they disappeared. And the finger of blame pointed at my father. Of course, he was innocent. Well, I know it's natural for a son to defend his father, but my father and I were very close. We always felt totally free to confide in one another. Even so, Damien, sometimes there are areas in a person's life where no one is included, not even a close relative. I understand that. I realize that I, I start from a very deep personal bias. But I have another starting point also. Jefferson Brown. Are you implying that he was the thief? I'm absolutely convinced that he stole those documents. But what was his motive? What, was he a spy? <laughs> no, I don't think he was a foreign agent or anything like that. In fact, this was not a, a political situation. I don't think Jefferson Brown ever had a political conviction in his life. He had one primary concern, money. And of course, these documents were marketable. Well. He was greedy enough to think so, but as it turned out, he was wrong. I don't think he got a dime off of them. He just managed to destroy the man who trusted him. Damien, how sure are you of your allegations? Well, I do not have any solid evidence, if that's what you mean. If I did, I would have cleared my father's name a long time ago. But if your father was innocent... My... My father was in very bad shape when this happened. My mother had died several years before, and he never really got over it. And then when the documents disappeared, well, I'm sure that he felt a very strong sense of guilt, even though he didn't take them. I mean, it was his department, it was his responsibility. And then when he realized that they suspected him, well, I think it was just too much for him. Had you um, mentioned any of this before now, your theory? Well, by the time I realized the truth, Nancy, it was too late. After my father's suicide, Jefferson Brown left the country. He went to Switzerland. I later realized that there had to be a connection. He obviously left the country to try to sell those documents. But you said he didn't succeed. Well, no, I don't see how he could have. I mean, the State Department changed the contingency plan almost immediately. I'm sure that every major foreign power was aware of that. Those documents were worthless. So, that left Jefferson Brown in Switzerland. Yes. And he did something unforgivable there. What was that? He... Uh... He died.